Hello, everybody. We have about five minutes till the uh, Plant 3D User Community Virtual Meetup for March begins. So um, I'll just go ahead and uh, mute myself, and we'll begin when everybody's joined us at about the top of the hour here. Hello, everybody. We're going to begin here in a couple minutes. This is Joel Harris. I apologize for the NVIDIA message in the lower right corner of my um, screen. I haven't figured out how to get that turned off, but uh, we're going to begin here in just about a minute and a half. So uh, and I'll go ahead and begin my camera as well so you can see Jason and I are joining today. Hopefully everybody's doing okay.
Well, welcome everybody. Um, it's the top of the hour according to my watch here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start the session. Um, we are uh, recording this uh, Plan 3D User Community Virtual Meetup for March 10th of 2020. So I just wanted to let you all know that it will be available on the um, Customer Success Hub for future viewing as of all the uh, past community virtual meetups. Uh, this month you have uh, myself, Joel Harris, and Jason Drew. We're both designated support specialists here with Autodesk. Um, we are uh, plant uh, specialists and we're going to be covering a, a topic this month that's interesting to a lot of our, our users out there and it's kind of a under the hood look at plants, uh, specs, and catalogs. So uh, we'll go ahead and start right into it. Um, before we begin, begin um, please keep your line muted. I think I've got everybody muted right now. If you have any questions, there's a questions box that, you know, or you can raise your hand uh, using the control panel inside the GoToMeeting uh, session here, the GoToWebinar session. And uh, feel free to, to ask questions. Jason's here to help while I'm talking to answer questions in the background. And I will be monitoring that through uh, uh, the side so I can kind of see if there's questions there. If there are, I'll pause and we can answer those as they pop up. So this is kind of a technical session, so I'm hoping that it, it satisfies some of your questions, but uh, feel free if we uh, can't answer the question during the session, we'll get back to you in the following month with a, a follow-up. So so I am uh, Joel Harris. I've been working with Autodesk for um, six years now. Uh, I uh, support various products surrounding the plant space. Uh, and before that, I was a, a process piping designer, which included software development, um, application management, uh, you know, checker, I mean, just basically all sorts of things you could do in 23 years. And uh, before that, I was a developer and partner with Autodesk. And uh, Jason, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. <clears throat> so my name is Jason Drew I'm in a similar role as uh, Joel Harris with the uh, designated support specialist with Autodesk. I've uh, been, been here about eight years now in product support. Um, started out in the, the standard subscription support and then moved over to enterprise support about a year after I joined here. Um, do have some background in the uh, oil gas chemical space. I worked just three years uh, as a P&ID designer, uh, smart plant P&ID administrator as well. And then moved over to the Autodesk uh, plant design solution products. So um, listed some products there that I work with, mainly plant, but also Navisworks, some of the Vin360, getting into that now, uh, Veteran 3ds Max. So I'll hand it back over to you, Joel. Thanks. Yeah, we got to update your slide there to get that BIM 360 in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, today's agenda, we're going to give you an overview of the session. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a quick plant 3D news, uh, just with some updates. And then we're going to talk about this month's topic, which is really maintaining associations between your catalogs, specs, and Plant 3D models. And this is going to allow you um, powerful workflows uh, for managing change. And then we'll uh, follow up with the questions that uh, answers the questions from last month, as well as open discussion and Q&A at the end. So hopefully we'll be able to do that in the hour that we have ahead of us. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So today, um, an overview of what, what we're our objective is, is to understand how spec items are linked to their source catalog, and that's the spec catalog connection. And then also we want to understand how AutoCAD Plan 3D model components are linked to their spec items, and that's the model to spec connection. And if you maintain both of those connections to those three different areas, um, you can leverage some powerful workflows inside of Plan 3D. So the, the whole idea is to get you to understand that, at least to get you the, the foundation if you need to dig further. We'll give you some resource materials at the end that you can look at for uh, getting more in depth um, knowledge of this. So each session that we do every month is intended to be casual engagement with a small portion for news and followed by the more general discussion around products and workflows. So hopefully uh, this is driven by the interests uh, of you folks. So please ask questions during the session as uh, they come up and we'll try to address them. Okay, um, safe harbor statement. I don't expect you to read this and I'm not gonna read it to you. Um, but uh, this session really here is, is there may be discussions or information shared that's, uh, that reveals um, future development efforts or roadmap items. And we don't want to, you to uh, make any purchasing or investment decisions based upon any information that you receive on this session um, because we might be revealing information about uh, future releases and um, we don't want you to, uh, to, to do that. So basically that's... Uh, the safe harbor statement here, please quickly scan that and understand that. If 
Okay, in the news, um, some of you have been involved in the, the Plan 3D Rogue beta. It's closing in eight days. Um, so I'm just looking at my calendar. Yeah, it's eight days from today. Uh, so uh, if you weren't involved in it, it's, it's too late to, to join the beta now, but I just wanted to let those of you who are in the beta know that you have eight more days to complete your testing and give feedback to the uh, Plant 3D development team. And if you want to be involved in a future beta program, uh, the email address there is plant3d.beta.team at autodesk.com. And uh, it's all available under the AutoCAD Customer Council because yeah, all of the Auto, AutoCAD, one AutoCAD products are um, have their betas under that one Customer Council now. So, uh, so please do that uh, if you are currently in the beta and be aware of that, that date coming up. So we're going to jump into the technical topic this this month, which is maintaining the catalog spec and Plan 3D Model Association. So let's go ahead and start into it. The four areas that we're going to focus on here is really what's the data that's used to keep the connections. What what is that? What what is the uh, important things that you need to know about? What causes disconnects and how can you avoid these issues? And then finally, the Plant Spec Update Check command, which is uh, a command that you would execute inside Plant 3D in the 3D model, how that works and what settings are, are available there. So these are the, the key topics and we'll jump right into what data is used to keep the connections. We'll talk about this uh, P &I, or P and PIDs and GUIDs or GUIDs, however you pronounce it, uh, which are globally unique um, identifiers or IDs. Um, and these uh, are the two types of IDs that are used to connect the uh, the specs, the catalogs, and Plan 3D. So the connections maintained between the Plan 3D model, specs, and catalogs use these IDs, and these IDs are GUID format, which is a, a longer uh, hashed out format there, which has, uh, I don't, can't remember how many uh, permutations, but there's a, a lot of different unique IDs there. And sometimes the IDs are unique sequential numbers, like the PNP ID, which might be example, uh, the number 121. They're, those are only unique across a single project, whereas the, the GUIDs are unique across all Plan 3D projects. So, And these are typically hidden from the user, but you can see them in the database. And when I say the database, I mean uh, the specs and catalog files. Uh, for specs, it's the PSPC file. Uh, the catalogs would be the PCAT files. Um, they're uh, actually SQLite databases, so you could actually open it up with a SQLite editor. Um, the Plan 3D files, whether you're SQL or SQLite, those databases also uh, exist out there. And those are the three places where the IDs are stored and uh, the connections are maintained between the, the different areas that we're talking about. So we talk about these IDs, they uh, will have different formats depending on which ID we're talking about. I'll, I'll express a little bit more about that soon. And those IDs are stored in the databases, meaning this catalog database, the spec database, or the, the, the drawing database. So if we're looking at the uh, connection between the catalog, which is the PCAT, which is the top um, image here, and I'm showing one from AutoCAD uh, Plan 3D 2016 shared content directory. Uh, this is the ASME pipes and fittings catalog, PCAT catalog. Um, and below that, I've got an image showing a spec, and this is from an AU class that I taught in uh, AU 2015, and I'll give you a link in this uh, document at the end to that uh, session where there's more in-depth information. But what you can see here is that in the catalog database and in the spec database, you have uh, the same size record ID. That uh, is down to the, the size item. It's not for the family, it's for the item itself. And so for the two-inch two weld neck flange here, that ID matches, um, and that'll, that means that that spec item came from that catalog. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the catalogs are stored within the spec, so the spec knows which catalogs were used to build it, and then the ID tells it which item, and that's, those catalogs is, is uh, the one that's being referenced by the spec. So... Um, so that's within the spec itself, within the drawing and uh, and spec connection here. And I added this slide, Jason, since yesterday when we talked. Um, the project database, which in this case, I'm looking at a SQLite database. So I'm looking at the piping DCF, but this would be the piping tables in the uh, SQL database. Um, you can look at the flange PNP view, for example, 
and you can see the name of the spec is called out here and the site the spec record id is is one of those pnp ids they're only uh, it's an id that's specific for this project the combination of those two pieces of information will tell this model where to find those items in the spec so this is the connection that you have there so the bottom image here shows the actual spec name which is stored in the project database above and then that pnp id for that um, item in the engineering items table inside of the, uh, the spec is actually referenced in the model database up here in the top so this creates the connection this is the, the actual data that connects the spec to the, the drawing itself okay so we've just identified the ids they're in those two connections uh are there any questions so far at this point uh, don't see anything in the chat. If you have any questions as we go along, be sure to just key those in, and I'll keep an eye on those and as we go along here. Yeah, and if if I'm going too fast, if this is too technical, um, please feel free to just ask the questions in the chat because I don't want to move through something which um, may be familiar to me but might be really interesting to you, and I want to make sure that uh, you have your questions answered um, in situ. So, so. How do those connections get created and when do they get created? Well, when you create an item in the catalog, in your Plant 3D catalog, when a new part is created in the catalog, um, it gets its ID. It gets that long GUID ID within the catalog, which is the part size record um, ID. And uh, <clears throat> the, there's no connections at that point because it just exists in the catalog. But when you take a part from the catalog and add it to the spec, at that point, the connection is made because that ID is used from the catalog and placed into the spec itself. So um, that's, and then a new PNP ID gets assigned to that item in the spec itself so that later when it gets placed in the model, uh, your Plant 3D model, it knows the spec that it came from and the PNP ID in that spec. So as you can see that connections are made based on when things are placed, so if I delete a part out of the spec and then put it back in from the catalog, um, even though I might have just made changes in the catalog, if I delete it out of the spec and put it back in, it's going to create a new PNP ID at, at that point, which means that it's no longer connected to any of the models that are out there in, in, the, uh, in the project. It'll still have a connection to the catalog because it's got the same size record ID but it won't have a connection to any models because you've created a new PNP ID when you create a new new item in the spec. So, uh, so that's just one of the workflows that we want to make sure that we we communicate. So I'll go cover those again, but I'm just giving that example right there as the kinds of things that will break connections. So, so when you up want to update a spec with catalog changes, this is a manual process. There's no notifications. So when you're editing specs, it doesn't tell you that you have updates from the catalog, you have to know that. So typically the role of catalog builder, catalog modifier, it's the same person or group of people that are also updating specs. So communication is assumed between those two groups. The software doesn't do that communication for you. Um, so that's a workflow that you wanna identify within your company is that if you're updating catalogs, make sure to identify uh, which specs are affected by those items. Um, that's really something that the software is not going to tell you because the catalog doesn't know where those items are used in what specs. Um, that's That connection is not stored in the catalog, but within the spec it knows which catalog it came from. So uh, if you have active projects going on with using specs, it's recommended that you keep an, uh, some sort of awareness of what catalogs are referenced with those specs uh, when you're building a, them up. So uh, it's a manual process within the spec editor, and you'll go into the specs drop down and pick for uh, a check for updates from catalogs. And at that point, it executes a check, um, and it will uh, tell you if there's any updates there. And you can pick the show details um, that's shown here in this right dialog box if you want to get more information about what's going to be affected. And you can choose at that point to update the specs to match the catalog parts or don't. Um, and I'll talk about some workflows that you want to consider at this point uh, regarding um, some of the updates that happen there. So uh, if you're going to control which properties are updated, uh, you want to change the update specs from catalog settings, which is on the left. It's two below the, the highlighted one there. And that's an actual uh, 
setting that you make within the spec editor to tell it which properties you want to update from, from the catalogs. So given that information, now we're going to look at what typically causes the disconnects with the, the specs and the catalogs. So the, the break, the can it disconnects between the plan 3D model and the specs are typically caused by renaming or moving specs. Because as I mentioned earlier, um, the spec name is stored in the project database and the model knows what spec it's looking for and it looks for the PNP ID in that spec. So if you rename or move your specs um, outside of it where it's looking for them in the project uh, path and with the name that it's looking for, it'll create a disconnect in the model and it won't be able to find those items. So it can't update the model with any changes of those specs. Um, if you change your project spec path to a different location and for some reason you don't move over all the specs that were originally used in those models, then you'll also get a disconnect. Deleting part families from specs, um, that's the, the, the uh, instance that I mentioned earlier where you are editing your specs and you decide, oh, this, this valve is no longer in the spec, I'm going to delete it. If you do that, um, you've just broken the connections and any possibility of, of updating the models with those items. So I've got a workflow here that's, that's actually described briefly in the slide and it goes into more in depth in the AU class, but uh, it's a way of maintaining your connection while still being able to update your specs with new parts. So you want to avoid deleting part families from your specs. You also want to avoid removing parts um, from spec families and then re-adding them by checking that remove from spec box. That's a really common one. People think, well, I'm just clicking the box for this one size to remove it from the spec. Say, I don't want the two and a half inch size. I don't want the five inch size. Well, if you uncheck that later after you've checked it, um, it gets a new ID. It gets a new PNP ID. So you are basically breaking the connection. It's like deleting one of the uh, part families, but you're just deleting that size. So uh, we recommend not removing from spec and then re-adding back in. Um, if you you should have a good comprehensive size set there. Um, so it's best to be a little bit liberal with your sizes available in the specs when you begin a project um, rather than trying to constrain it early on because if somebody tries to add something and then you remove it from the spec later, it'll break the connection. Um, then the connections between the specs and the catalogs, typically it's a, it's a similar issue as you, where you rename or, or, remove, or move your catalogs to a different location. To where it can't find them or can't find the name of the catalog. And then uh, deleting uh, parts from the catalogs will delete that original GUID ID that's that's referenced in the spec itself. So, so these are things you want to avoid and there are workflows to avoid all of this. Um, so just want to check real quickly here and uh, in with you, Jason, see if there's any questions on this as far as what causes it. Um, just had one question answered here in the chat around basically using shared uh, specs you know you can adjust the path if you have a common set of specs like if you had a client standard of specs you could do that now that works for SQLite and SQL projects but for a vault or cloud collaboration project those that spec sheets folder has to remain underneath the project subfolder just the way that it that it works with check-in and check-out so right that's yeah, the only exactly. question so far yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, and really spec management, content management, that's, you know, it's just like managing your block libraries, your font libraries. In some sense, you know, you get a, you want them to be shared, but then you want to be able to have that versatility of, um, of being able to move them with the project and manage them within the project itself. So um, based on the, the platform that you're using for collaboration, uh, your workflows do change. So one of the ways to avoid these issues, I alluded to this earlier, is, is defining the roles within your project uh, workflows, making sure that you have an admin who's responsible or admins for modifying catalogs, uh, saving those changes, documenting them, creating backups is really important, uh, and updating the spec from the catalog as part of that process, um, knowing which specs are referred to which, with each catalog. Usually, um, I've seen people actually uh, keep track of the specs uh, when they're building them and which catalogs are being referenced so they, they know that uh, and then they, then they can go back and uh, from their own internal database documentation know which specs are affected by catalog updates. Some catalog updates um, if you're looking at project specific specs uh, will only affect the specs in projects that are active so you don't need to worry about projects that are that are archived or done 
um, those specs are no longer being used. But uh, any active specs out there that ref need the updates from the catalog should uh, have those applied. Now, at getting them applied within the models is the step uh, where the admin would actually notify the users of the spec change. And they can even notify which projects are affected by that spec change. And uh, they, they might reference in their email a standard procedure that you have with the steps for using the, uh, the spec update tool within Plan 3D uh, or the, the, the update from spec tool, so which I'm going to go over in, in a bit. Uh, but yeah, it, it's good for you to have good standard procedures here so that even your new users know how to update specs um, that are changing the project. So notifying the users of the spec change, copying the updated spec to the project from your source location, which is something that I, I recommend as well, that you don't edit specs live in a project unless you happen to be in a collaboration project where um, that's uh, being stored in a central location like on... Um, BIM 360 team or vault, you can do that as an admin. But uh, you want to typically have for a SQL project that's a, a network project, a, a, an offline place where you have a backup copy or, or master copies of your specs. And uh, then the procedure would be for the users to update their models from the spec and using da data manager, which is a procedure I'll show you here, verify that all model parts are updated if there is a change in the spec. So. And then if there's graphical changes, that's another issue that the designers have to uh, address because sometimes the changes in the model are descriptive and sometimes they're graphical, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. So, um, so when we talk about avoiding the issues uh, that we talked that we talked about that break <coughs> the uh, the connections, we want to uh, think about certain things. One of them is the property overrides. Uh, if you are applying property overrides in your spec editor when you add uh, components from the catalogs to your specs, in, for example, if your catalogs contain the, the component for an elbow uh, or a part family that's elbows, but it doesn't have the actual material, uh, you may want to, uh, and, and you're using property overrides to apply those as you add them to specs, you want to make sure you deselect those in the spec editor from the update uh, specs from catalog settings. In other words, if you update your spec with changes from the catalog and the spec was uh, contained in the material but the catalog doesn't, if you have those boxes checked, it will inherit those descriptive uh, family part descriptions and long descriptions and such from the catalog and you'll lose all your, your materials uh, from that. So if you're doing any property or overrides, uh, make sure that you uh, Deselect the properties that are being uh, overridden when you add something from the catalog. The next, um, always use Save As to create new versions of copies of your specs uh, and catalogs. Older versions, Plan 3D, you could get away with um, going out to the PSPC and the PSPX files and just renaming them with Windows File Explorer. Um, but in later versions, I think is around 2018 and later, um, so when we started to implement uh, project specs within the uh, projects manager and within uh, BIM 360 team and vault. Uh, we need to make sure that there's connections within the PSPC and PSPX file to each other and so that they knew where they were located. And so you, you can't just go out and rename the files with File Explorer and have them work correctly. You should use a save as within the spec editor if you're gonna do that. So a tip there for you. And then don't delete items from specs or models if possible. Um, use the substitute grips to replace obsolete incorrect parts with new parts. And that's where I'm going to show you a, a workflow that's briefly described here in the next slide. So let's say that uh, I have to uh, switch out a, a valve that's in my spec with another valve. They're both valid valves. They're available on the market. They are, let's say, from the ASME valves catalog, but I've got the wrong valve in my spec. Well, rather than deleting that valve out of my spec and then putting the, the correct valve in, as the admin, I need to first question whether or not any models have been started uh, where these, these valves may exist in the models. If they do, then you probably don't want to just quickly delete the valves out of the spec and replace them with the catalog. Uh, valves and save the spec back out because you'll be breaking the connection between the models and the specs because you've just deleted that 
uh, valve out of the spec. So what typically you can do within the, the spec itself is change the valve description. The long description family in this uh, screen shows you that you can change that to say out of spec with asterisks in front of it. Um, and you're just changing in the spec. You're not changing it in the catalog, but you're changing the incorrect valve in the spec to have this description. And then you add the correct valve to that spec. So now it's got two valves in it, one that says out of spec and one that's the correct valve. So now you can notify your users, I've updated spec one, two, three. If you have uh, you know go through the standard procedure, here's the link. And what they'll do is they'll go to that standard procedure and it says, okay, open up data manager after you've well, first run plant spec update check, update your model with all descriptive information, up, update it with graphical information, and open up data manager and check for any out of spec items. If you find an out of spec item in data manager, which you can sort them by description, they're all gonna to float to the top with the asterisks in it. Uh, use the, the zoom tool that's in data manager. When you click on that item in data manager, it'll zoom to it in the model. Then you use the substitute grips to substitute out that valve with the correct valve from the spec. And once you've gone through data manager and you've identified that all the valves are updated, then you don't have to worry about any of those out of spec valves being there. If you generate a bill of materials later on in the project, and you're still getting these out-of-spec valves, that means somebody didn't update their model. So this is a sort of a, a catch for you and a QA check to make sure that you're pushing forward to the models all of the changes from the specs and that people are catching them and following procedures. So this particular process here, where you can see the substitute grip in this right slide here, this right image, shows the valve that's being used is the out-of-spec valve and the person can select the new correct valve from the spec that's that's been added by the admin. Um, this is all in that AU class, which I'll, I'll give you the link in, in the uh, PDF of this presentation, which is going to be available on the customer success hub site. And that's, uh, or you could go to the AU site and just search on the word unbreakable uh, for AU online classes, and you'll find this class in the PDFs there. You can download it and even watch the video on that. But it talks about this as an example workflow. We go into all sorts of different workflows in that class for maintaining spec to catalog connections and, and spec to model connections like this one. Okay. Are there any questions on that particular workflow or um, what I've covered so far? We're going to continue on with uh, procedures here. but um, A couple here in the chat. Um, okay. Good questions here. So. Uh, first one is, is is there a um, a migration process? So I, if I remember correctly, the last uh, release was was Plant 2015, where you had to migrate up to you know your spec and catalog as you go forward. Uh, but then 2016, out, all the way to 2020, I don't believe there's any migration required anymore. Is that right? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think 2016, 2017, 2018 are all compatible and likewise. So it's the, it used to have the version inside of the uh, the spec and catalog. It would, it would store the version of that file, and so the software was kind of triggered. It would trigger the the migration, but you don't need to do that since then. So. Okay. Uh, another question here around uh, changing a spec. So if you already have some pipe that's been modeled with say 150 pound, and then you come back and there's a change that has to go to 300 pound what would be the best way to do that? Does it have to be remodeled or or can you just change that uh, and, and just have it automatically switch the spec over like if you select an entire line run, pipe run? Well, it's the, when you talk about 150 pound and 300 pound piping, it sounds like, I don't know whether this is flanged pipe or a, a, a rating that's, a, that's, that I'm, that's not a standard ANSI rating, but um, if it's flanged pipe, then you're gonna need to need to have those connectors in there, you know, your bolts and gaskets be also updated. So you can't just do a quick descriptive change on it and just update it from the spec. You're going to need to actually add in the 300 pound pipe uh, and replace it with that so that it will then rebuild the connections on the flanges. Um, so you have to determine whether it's an actual graphic connection or if it affects, or if it's a graphic change only, uh, or, or sorry, descriptive change only, you can just do it that way with just changing the description in the spec. If it's going to change the graphics like the size or connections to other items, then you have to actually add the new components to the spec. So, and then I guess one thing to watch out for is when, when you change that, like if you get the new spec, you go into select a, a, a pipe run, and you switch that, it's going to try to rebuild it much as it can, but it may be situations where it disconnects and you have to remodel a little bit. 
exactly i mean there's the software is not a designer it's not a piping designer like like the people on this call are so it's going to try to um you know if there's pipe on either side like in this particular image if this valve that i pick the double disc valve is uh, shorter than the conduit valve then it'll move those flanges in with it um, but if it was fitting makeup on either side with with fittings or tight connected to a a, a pump or something um, it's not going to be able to uh, to redesign or add insert pipe in there to fit it in and to hold the elbow out there where it's where it's dropping out of the pipeway so um, you you got to go back and review your graphical changes um, so if it's if it's a rating change like 150 to 300 pound you know the component sizes are going to change you know there's going to be probably be some tight spots where you have fitting makeup and you got to go check to make sure everything's still connected so look for your water droplets uh, look for those um, connections when you do the spec update to make sure you, as you do each one that it's uh it's all connected the way you want and that if it did move the valve that it's uh you, you don't need to go back in there and add pipes somewhere or remove pipes so um so yeah just as the designer here don't expect the software to know where your anchor points are and, and stuff it's gonna if it's got pipe on either side it'll use it but you don't know which way it's gonna go and then the the last question here in the chat is after the project is finished out can you is it safe to remove those out of spec parts that you have and, and take them out of the spec yeah definitely i mean the, one thing is it, having that out of spec description means it's going to show up on an iso if somebody forgot to change it in the model so you'll catch it there um hopefully you'll catch it before that but it, it's it keeps people thinking about the data so you're looking at data manager not just at the the physical you know outside uh parts that they're in the model like in the right screen there um, we want people looking at the data too because that goes out and gets ordered on bills of materials it's going to get ordered off of the isos and built off the isos so really the whole idea is once you've replaced them all in the model they shouldn't be in your project database anymore so you should be able to go out and delete those out of the spec if you need that spec to be clean at some point could be that by the 30 percent review the specs are frozen and all your designers are on top of it, they've replaced them all in all the models, well, then you can go delete them out of the specs when you know that they're out of all the models. So definitely a good question. And, th and that way you're keeping your specs clean and your designers don't accidentally pick an out of spe spec gate valve when they're not paying attention. So. Okay, let's keep moving on here. Um, we're about halfway through and I wanna talk about the, the, the last thing, which is the plant spec update check command. Um, there's a couple variables here that are related to the plant spec update check. This is, if you were to type this in, this is the plant spec update check command. You can do it at any time in plant 3D. Um, there's the plant spec notify variable, which is the first one in this list. And that's stored in the registry. So it's not drawing specific and it's either one or zero. And if it's set to one, then plant 3D will check for spec file updates. If it's set to zero, it won't. Um, typically we recommend this should, its default is one, it should stay at one. Um, if you really have a workflow that you can justify to not check for spec updates, um, then you'd want to set it for zero, but I don't typically see that out there. Uh, the plant spec notify time, this is zero through four and it's basically hours. So this is how often it's going to check the specs um, and go through and, and see if there's the updates that have happened. If you get a lot of spec updates, you might set it to, um, uh, to one um, zero I think that zero means that it's going to check um, what is zero I can't remember what that is is that that it checks only when it starts up the drawing and that's the only time I think if I remember right that was it um, we might have to doc go look go google that one but uh, that's the number of hours the first check will always be made when the drawings loaded so it always does that one and then default is set to two hours so then two hours after that it would make the second check um, and then the, the these plant spec update check command it actually forces a check at any time. So that's a way of if you get the email from your admin that says we just updated this spec, uh, update your models, and this guy wants to do it before he runs to lunch, he could force the plant spec update at that time by typing this command and then run through the updates and, and save his model. So zero is only when the drawing loads up. This is a check for him. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm. So so nice to have a co-pilot. <laughs> All right, so that's basically the plan spec update check command, which is the way that you can set up uh, forcing it from the model to check for spec updates. And when you do that, this is what you're going to be presented with is 
uh, you know, the, the check now button there, which is, and you can also control your settings for the plant spec uh, notify time, which is, you know, every hour, every two hours, whatever. And uh, that's the up left there. The, the upper right dialog here is the property update dialog. A lot of people get confused because there's two dialogs that pop up when there's spec updates available. There is this one in the upper right, which is only for updates that are properties only, text only updates. They're not affecting the geometry in the model. So it's pretty much a, you know, ask me later or update the specs. It's like an, an automatic thing. It's not a big deal for people. Um, and it usually doesn't affect the design in the model. Whereas the bottom dialog that's usually docked at the bottom, this is your geometry update. And this is more of a individual update. So you can see how many parts are affected and you can tell it to individually update the parts. And then you can do the review at that time. That's the design intent of this to see what's affected. For in this example here, you can see there's a, a gate valve that's coming off of a pump um, and if it's a pump suction, there might be a, a minimum straight run that you want there to avoid, you know, cavitation on the pump. So you don't want that to be too short because of that valve getting too large. You'd want to move that elbow farther out. So these are piping design considerations that you know, but the software doesn't know. It doesn't have those rules in it. It'll just put a larger valve in there and be be fine with that. So the second dialogue at the bottom is for geometry updates. It allows you to kind of interact and see those changes and sort of approve them as you're going through it. So don't get the two confused. They're two different processes um, that you can do, uh, but they're all triggered by the same command. Okay. So again, what's happening behind the scenes with the plant spec update check, when you execute this command, whether it's automatic or when you type it, it's going to create a list of specs that are referenced in the plant 3D model that you're in. It's going to go out and look at those spec files out there on the network or in the project path that's specified. And it's going to say, are these spec files newer than the, the uh, date record that I have in my drawing? So when it inserts a component, it knows the, the date record of that component. Um, and it's if the spec files are newer than that, then it's going to say, okay, there's an update. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and check to see if there's updates. If there's if the spec files are not newer, then it ignores those and there's no update available. Then it's gonna check to see if the ID matches between the model and the spec. So it's found the spec, which is one of the two components. Now it's looking for that PNP ID, which is stored in the model project database, and it's also stored in the spec. And it's gonna go check to see if that's there. If you deleted something out of your spec, then you've deleted that PNP ID. It's not gonna find it, and that's where you break that connection. So um, that's where why the workflow that I was talking about earlier keeps those PNP IDs in the spec and it will update your model. So if the IDs match and the spec is found, then it's going to go ahead and update the parts and you'll see those two dialogues that were in the previous box. Okay. So what gets changed in the model uh, is just like the plant spec update settings in the spec editor between the spec and the catalog, you can control in your project setup the spec update settings here for all of the different part families, the different component types. So for example, fasteners are gonna have certain properties um, and then within the fasteners uh, set uh, family, you've got you know bolts and gaskets and the sub, sub components there. They're all gonna have different properties. So you can check which ones you wanna have updated from the spec and you can say which ones you don't want updated from the spec. So uh, if there is a, something that you, you know that um, Let's say in supports, there's sometimes with supports, you're doing a lot of changes within the model itself and you don't want it to go out to the support spec and set all your descriptions back to the default. Um, that's, that's So you might want to go to the support um, spec, you know, because the support has its own pipe support spec in your project um, and uncheck the types of uh, descriptive things that you don't want changed when you run a spec update check because you can't tell it you know, check for specs, but don't check for pipe support spec updates. Um, it's, it treats all specs the same. So you need to be aware of that. If your workflows are that your designers typically type in a specific support description for that shoe or that dummy leg, um, you don't want the next time a spec up, a update happens for it to wipe all that out. So um, make sure you look at that support uh, properties that you're updating with that, with that change there. So this is in project setup and it's, uh, stored for that entire project. So, all right. So that's pretty much the the, the meat of 
the uh, presentation this week, and these are the two classes that, um, that or the class and the, the blog article that talks about the same stuff, that kind of the two complement each other. The blog article is a little shorter. I think that the AU class is a 30-page document or something that I've got in there on how to, to um, you know, example workflows, more in depth about where these views are and where the IDs live and and when they get created and all that stuff. So that if you want the actual, you know, deep documentation on everything we've talked about, or if there's something that I said that you can't remember, uh, you can go to the video recording or you can go to this class right here and. It's got far more, um, and Autodesk University in itself is a great resource. Uh, we have uh, sessions there on how to build catalogs, how to, you know, good workflows for building specs. Um, I recommend that you, if you're interested in this topic that you take a look at the content there, because I think there's a lot to learn. And this class itself is five years old, so it's not like I'm teaching you anything today that didn't exist back then. Um, the same features and the same design is in the software. so. Definitely uh, get up to speed with that and, and make sure your company's workflows are the most efficient for managing change within your projects. And then, of course, the In the Pipes blog is one that uh, Jason and I are part of a team of support people that keep that up to date with articles. And that's where you're going to find, you know, uh, new features or hidden Easter eggs or whatever in the, in the software. And we'll, we'll keep you up to date there. But there's also uh, an article that talks about this topic. So... Great. So those are those. And like I said, unbreakable is the keyword there. It's the only AU class that's ever been called that. And I'm pretty proud of that. So, all right. So we have our Q&A follow-up at this point. Um, Jason, is there any questions there? Uh, I don't see anything in the Q&A box. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type in there. If you want to uh, speak live, uh, you know, you can raise your hand in the uh, GoToWebinar session here and I can, we can unmute you and, and you can ask live. Um, either way works for you. All right, let's see here. Comment here that someone really enjoyed the session and glad that this is a good topic. It's it can be very tricky, so it's it's a good one. Thank you for that. You bet. Yeah, thank you. Good. I didn't even realize that my NVIDIA screen little window went away. I don't know what I did, but it, it's gone yeah, now. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, um, we have some questions uh, from last month that we wanted to follow up on, for those of you that were there. Uh, the February 11th uh, session, we were talking about uh, database um, uh, maintenance, I guess you'd say, um, stability. So um, one of the first questions we had was uh, when uh, this person was first started with Plan 3D. You were told not to use the autosave command because of conflicts with writing the SQL database. And is that not an issue? And, and we said that the autosave should not be an issue with newer releases of Plan 3D, which is basically 2018 or later. Um, we're trying to um, isolate and and uh, uh, I say make the updates that happen with uh, collaboration projects, which include Vault, um, Dem360 team so that there's sort of a consistency there. And when you're working in uh, Plan 3D, autosave is completely safe, and then you've got other engines in the back maintaining the communications to connect things with the, uh, the database and do those updates. So, so autosave is, is fine, especially uh, 2018 or later. Um, autosave backup, best to save to the C default location. Uh, have you seen any issues saving through a company internet network folder location where files become corrupt? And it is recommended that, um, that uh, your autosave backup be on your fastest local drive. There's a lot going on um, with Plan 3D compared to just straight AutoCAD. And if there is any latency in your network or any packet loss, you don't want that to be affecting uh, your data in any way if possible. Um, Plan 3D does have a blob database within the drawing itself. And there are workflows for uh, overriding the, um, the updating the blob database and using the data that's in the SQL database or vice versa so that uh, if you do corrupt data, you want to try to recover as much as possible. So um, putting your autosave on the network folder might be a, might be a risky uh, situation because if you have a, a poor network connection, you're not only risking the SQL database communication, but you're now also risking your, your blo drawing blob database communication. So um, the uh, how will the the third question there? How will the drawing open save process change with cloud collaboration? 
Well, Plan 3D communicates with the local SQLite project, which is which is in the collaboration cache on your cloud collaboration project. And um, the, uh, the Plan 3D is working with that. And then in the background, that's synchronizing to the cloud. So really, it's just like working for you as a user uh, with a SQLite project, except it's got an engine in the back that's communicating between your single user single light project and the multi-user cloud-based SQL project. So it's a it's a separate process and it doesn't affect your local saves and stuff like that as far as that goes. So um, and we'll definitely um, take these Q and A questions from previous sessions that we collect them and publish them up to the uh, Plant 3D Virtual Community Meetup resource store, which I happen to have somewhere here. I think I got it. Get it in my browser here. Yeah, let's see if we got that here. Yeah, so you can see it here. This is our virtual meetup store where we actually have the uh, proposed agenda for the year so you can see what sessions are coming up. So we're looking forward to in May telling you about Plan 3D 2021. Um, that will should be released by then, hopefully. Um, and if any of the other sessions in the past, you can look at the recordings from the different sessions. So, all right. And, uh, one question here in the chat is, is there a possibility to script the uh, backup process? And so far, I haven't seen anything for that because it does require um, like a, a manual pick and click from Project Manager. If you're using the integrated uh, project backup within Plant there. Um, now, if you were just run a manual backup, you could technically grab the, the project folder and then the SQL databases with that and sort of keep those together. So that can be somewhat automated through um, like your IT group whatever backup procedures they have. But if you're using the, the project backup that's integrated within plant, uh, it's it's still a manual a manual procedure. And that would be the case for like Vault or Cloud Collaboration where you could have to back those up. Um, well, I say Vault, I, I meant Cloud Collaboration specifically. Those have, you have to pull down the database from the cloud to get the whole project um, backed up. Yep. Well, good. Well, thanks, Jason. Well, at this point, we're, we're open for any other questions, um, any other discussion that you want to do, and otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll close down. I don't see anything else here, so... That's good. Uh, Great. Well, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you coming, and I'm glad that this was, this was a useful session for you. If at any point you found it was a bit too deep technically, believe me, um, it's, it was for me at first when I started digging into this, but uh, check out that EU class or that article in the blog. I think that it's explained and you can read it in, in, a, in a very uh, organized fashion there rather than uh, having it thrown at you within a, a 40 minute session. I think that um, the content's really useful and it'll help you with uh, understanding how Plan 3D can be used to manage um, data within with the specs in the catalog. So thanks very much and uh, we'll talk to you all next month. Thank Bye you. Everybody. Bye.